I have uh, Simon Rucker with me tonight, and he's from the Maine Appalachian Trail Land Trust, which is different than the Appalachian Trail. Conservancy, yeah. Conservancy. Anything, yeah, well, first, yes. but before we before we go much further, what's the difference? What the, di the difference is Maine Appalachian Trail Land Trust was formed in 2002 as an organization that can hold land, so we can actually own land for the public trust, land for recreation, for conservation, ecological value and conservation easements too. So the Appalachian Trail is technically like a national park. It's it's right. just a national park in a big long ribbon that goes for 2,184 miles from Georgia. So because it goes through all these states and different areas, there's a ATC, Appalachian Trail Conservancy, which you might have seen. Right. They have like a blue logo. They administer the trail. They're also a nonprofit. They're right. not affiliated with the government, but they administer the trail. Right. And then we can hold land along the trail. So if you look at our map, right. which uh, we're going to get a big, we're going to get, we're gonna we'll have a blow up of the map, but you yeah. can see that the trail in Maine <coughs> is very thin. Right. So if you're hiking along and you want the experience of being in wilderness and there's a timber company on the other side and they want to cut all the trees, it's not the experience of wilderness if you're on this little path. Sure. So our organization works with the National Park Service and ATC and also MATC, the Maine Appalachian Trail Club, which make those brown signs you right. see on the trail. They right. maintain the trail. Sure. So we all work together to figure out what lands need protection along the trail. Now, how do you how do you find these lands? I mean, uh, it, it seems like it's it's all wilderness. Although you know we're cutting a lot of trees and there's a lot of a lot of resource there. But how do how do we how do we find the trail that that section of land that you can actually put into the trust? Well, it starts sort of with, with local people and communities who know these lands, who've hiked on them for years. Um, maybe they, you know, recreate on them, cross-country ski, hike, go up to pick berries. We have a trail that might be opening over the summer called the Berry Pickers Trail. And it's, Great. Where, it's where people historically would go up Saddleback Mountain and pick berries. So you sort of learn about it in that way, and you just know the special places that need protection and you work with the landowners depending on who they are and what their needs are and sure. you know then you can sort of work to protect places for public benefit and that's what we do right and and the the big one we we got in i think it was in 213 was that crocker mountain crocker mountain. Was that, that was you folks crocker mountain was it was a project that was started by maine appalachian trail land trust and it was sort of indicated by Appalachian Trail Conservancy because they have all kinds of scientists and people who study the trail and things like that. Right. And this that land was owned by Plum Creek Timber Company and Plum Creek was sort of saying, "Hey, you know, we're ready to sort of we we understand that this is ecologically valuable land and maybe we should, you know, work out some sort of deal where it's preserved and owned by the state." Which is eventually what happened. We had the assistance of the Trust for Public Land. They're a large national conservation right. organization and they have sort of capital they can sort of bring in, you know, but they sort of work at a, a higher level. They don't sort of work with in localities or anything like that with people. They work right. with groups like us. Right, and that's a, uh, a lot of folks, um, they, they have this fear, um, well, some they don't understand what the trust is about, that, oh God, that's all, all we're gonna be able to do is camp in there, but there are other things going on. No, there's plenty of other things going on. If you, if you look at our map, you can see that, you know, we have, um, snowmobile trails actually go ac across one of our territories. Right. So, you know, we might be the main Appalachian Trail Land Trust and we're foremost about, you know, protecting the Appalachian Trail corridor, but, you know, we're, everyone works together in these areas, you know. Right. So we work with snowmobile clubs so they can have access for their, they have a huge loop called the Moose Loop, which goes right. all around the High Peaks region. Um, we work with cross-country skiers. We work with the timber companies. Right. Um, all kinds of groups. We work with Sugarloaf, we work with Saddleback, good neighbors also, sure. you know, sure. understanding that people who recreate want to recreate in different ways. Right. Yeah. So you can still harvest in some of the land trusts? Is there a limited harvesting in some of it? Uh, we, on the lands we actually own, we, right. we don't harvest because we have a property on Saddleback Mountain and it's harvesting the, the timber, it's on the side sure. of a mountain, it's sure. not economically right. viable, right. you know, right. and also we, you know, in that area, that's an area where we probably wouldn't harvest because it is along the AT corridor. Sure. We might do selective harvesting, something like that. We do hold easements, and the project we just completed, you know, that we had a celebration for today is a working forest easement. Right, well, well, tell us about what happened today. Today was a big celebration in Phillips, Maine. The project is called Orbit and Stream, 
It's 5,800 acres. 5,800, that's a huge chunk 58, of land. It's a huge, well, Crocker, I think the Crockers were about 12,000 acres. Right. And that's two different parcels. This sure. is the the, um, the urban stream property you can see right here. Is now that's on the back side of? That is on the sort of southeast side of Saddleback Mountain. So We'd be able to see that on the top of Sugarloaf. Yes, Venice. you'd be. It's actually this vast forest area, which you know, in when it's when it's all green in the summer, is beautiful. It's this long, sloping, vast forested area has you know mountain streams, overlooks. There's a there's an area right. called Potato Hill, which is in here, which is actually over three thousand feet, so it's more like wow. a mountain. Wow! And if you're on Saddleback Junior, if you go down the Appalachian Trail, you can see all over this forested land. And this project was about eight years in the works, where we had some of our board members, um, a guy named Pete McKinley, who works for the Wilderness Society, we'd commissioned him to do an ecological study of this region, about what was ecologically valuable about this region. Because, you know, it seems like kind of a no-brainer now, because all these lands have been preserved, but once upon a time, this was just timber area, you know, people weren't really certain what was going to happen to it, ownership was changing, timber companies were saying, we're going to sell this land, who's going to buy it, you know? conservation guys get in line right so at that time this guy Pete McKinley sort of picked this area as ecologically valuable for climate change for um, you know species able to adapt and migrate and it has you know rare birds as Canada lynx golden eagles even in there which are Bigfoot Bigfoot no <laughs> not yet you're sure not yet well I heard last night that where they were coming across the border <laughs> but I'm not sure okay so no Bigfoot in there they might take the trail down <laughs> we haven't seen them yet on that property but so anyway so anyway they you know our our land trust approached the the owners who's Link Letter Brothers Timberlands who are right. based in Athens Maine and you know they they sort of bought into that this is ecologically valuable even though it's working forest it could still be ecologically sure. valuable so Link Letter Brothers eventually you know, they started talking about a conservation easement as, as the way to do it. So Linkletter Brothers still owns this land, and they can still harvest on this land, but they have to do it according to certified standards so right. that, you know, they can't just go in and clear cut. And they wouldn't do that anyway because they're, you know, they're a responsible timber company. So fast forward now to 2014, eventually, we c that's when we called in the Trust for Public Land to help us with some of these things, you know, financially. And the deal was completed just right before Christmas. Conservation easement <coughs> held by the state of Maine, which guarantees recreation for everybody. So you can just and walk how can in there you get right in? How now. can you get in, in this time of year? Snowmobile trail? This, this time of year, the snowmobile ITS 84-86 goes right through there, and it's a really popular loop called the Moose Loop, which right. goes all the way around uh, Mount Abraham and then yeah. back up this way. And then, you know, eventually right. they might talk about some connections in other places with Caribou Valley Road and, and sure. things like that. Snowmobiles primarily, ATVs in the summer. It's great for cross-country skiing, um, and the state, you know, has plans for it in the future for for small parking areas, trail access, and there's a trail called the Fly Rod Crosby Trail, which a is what? a foot trail, sure, which starts in Phillips, which you can get sort of down in in this area here in Phillips, and you can actually go all the way to Rangeley. The stream runs through there. What's what's the there's a stream called Orbiton Stream, Orbiton. and one right. of the, the it's sort of one of the central features of this. Orbiton Stream uh, has Atlantic salmon that right. make it all the way to the Atlantic Ocean, spawning Atlantic salmon. Oh.